Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. I thought it was about time to give you an update on the five spectrums that we looked at in the last video. Since making that video, I've had Horace and Eric on the operating table, starting with Horace, which was an issue for a board, meaning it needed new capacitors, a new keyboard membrane and a composite mod. The refurb went well, and here's some shots of the shiny new specy. <laughs> With the ULA being a Ferranti ULA, I decided in the end to desocket the chip and add a heatsink. It's the first one of these I've done and I'm really happy with the results. I think I've done a good job on the soldering. The reason you have to desocket the chip is because with a heatsink on, it stands too tall and clashes with the case. Horace even did the legwork in running Chaos for the last giveaway stream. As for Eric, Eric is an issue 3 and it's been a bit more interesting than just a straightforward refurbishment. With him being an issue 3, there were more jobs to do than with the issue 4A, starting with the new capacitors and keyboard membrane, but also a DC-DC mod as well as the composite mod. When I came to test the new keyboard membrane, I found a strange issue. It seemed like the 1 key wasn't working, but when I pressed the 2 key, it registered a 1, and so on across the row as far as 5. The same thing also happened from the right hand side. So 0 didn't work, but the 9 key registered a 0, and so on to the 6 key. Luckily we've had a really good in-depth look at the keyboard in a recent video, a link to it below, and we can explain quite easily what's happening here. If you recall, the keyboard is a grid of columns and rows, and when a column is shorted to a row by a key press, the key press is registered. This highlighted column is the column that's not registering anything, and all the other columns seem to be shifted over by one. So I wanted to check the keyboard connector for a start. Here I'm testing the voltage on each of the five columns. If you look at the diagram here, you can see that every column is held high by the pull-up resistors at the top. So every pin on this left-hand connector should have a reading of around 5 volts, and it turns out it did, so no problem there. Next I wanted to check that each of the five columns is connected to the correct resistor so that no wires have been crossed in that area. So I did a quick continuity check between the pins on the connector and the corresponding resistors and I did get continuity as expected. So the next place to look is the connection to the keyboard pins on the ULA. You can see the ULA keyboard pins here, and we should be able to find continuity between each of the columns, which is each of the pins on this connector, and the corresponding keyboard pin on the ULA. And that also checked out fine. The last thing I wanted to do was take the keyboard membrane out of the equation by shorting a column to a row to simulate a key press, and it actually worked. So the keys I couldn't press before, I could press now by shorting the wires manually which can only mean there's a problem with the membrane itself, although it looked fine to me on inspection. Looking more closely though, we can see that there seems to have been an error with the stamping out of the plastic. The connector on the right hand side isn't actually attached to anything, and you can see just on the left a sliver of the fifth column, so obviously everything is shifted over by one, and we have our problem. Here I've put a good membrane on top of this membrane, and you can see very clearly the error. Mystery solved. The only thing left to do now for Eric is clean everything up, put it back together and test it. Here are some shots of the finished job. Thanks for watching, next up we'll see the progress on Dizzy and Burke. 